Today I'm going to show how an armature growler works in a little different way than the other videos that I've seen. We will compare several armatures to show the difference between a good one and one with internally shorted windings. That is, windings that are shorted together, not shorted to ground. Historically, growlers were used for a few other tests, most of which can be made with a modern low ohms multimeter and really don't need a growler. In fact, most of the growlers I have seen use a current tester and or continuity tester circuit which runs at full power line voltage making them pretty dangerous if mishandled. These probes for instance are simply a continuity tester that turns on that light bulb when you short them together. Not something you'd want to have your six-year-old kid play around with, that's for sure. The most arty growler test is to determine whether there's an internal winding short or not. Articles in books and the scenes in most videos describe or demonstrate using a hacksaw blade to, to check for shorted windings. But just how much vibration of the hacksaw blade is caused for alarm? Hard to tell unless you use this device very often. I will try to show three ways that you can tell if there is a winding short. The first way that I'll be showing today is insulation discoloration. The second way is a change in magnetic flux, the old hacksaw blade test. And the third way will be in heating of the shorted windings. As far as I can tell, the varnish on the windings right here is, is pretty normal. But if you look down here closer to the commutator, these windings that are going into other parts of the armature are kind of gold colored, like they've really been hot. Now as I turn the armature some, you'll see more of these gold colored looking windings here. And here as we go to this part here, you can see gold colored windings and even there's the varnish has been actually cooked off in this whole area right here. This would lead one to believe that we have a, uh, a short in some of the windings. In other words, where the insulation has probably failed because it rubbed over the years or something like that, started a short, which created a lot of heat and so on. But these uh, gold colored areas here mean that the area got pretty darn hot at some time and to the trained eye is all that a motor repair guy needs to see to declare that the armature is defective. Notice that I have placed this armature on here and I'm just looking to see what the ambient temperature of that armature is. Now I will turn on the armature and will keep measuring the temperature of the coils as I rotate the armature. Notice the temperature rising. More in some areas than others. The 
commutator's getting hot even through the glove. Notice how this hot spot developed in one area of the coils. This shows that at least one winding of the armature has a short circuit. You can clearly see that the heating is localized to the shorted area. As a matter of fact, the first time I discovered this heating, I burned my hand when rotating the armature while doing the hacksaw blade test. That's why I'm using the glove now. You can see that this is armature C. Now a different armature is on the uh, growler and we'll see what happens with this one. You can see that there's really no heating at all going on in this good armature, which is number D, or letter D. The D armature, by the way, is uh, a Cub Cadet starter generator, and the C armature, the one that I showed first with the shorted coils, is also from a Cub Cadet starter generator. Now we'll look at a, uh, a starter motor armature, which is letter B. And with our letter B armature, which is again a starter rather than a generator, uh, you see essentially there was no heating that was going on there either. This is, this is the fourth uh, armature that I'll be testing to look for heat. And the point we want to make here is this is another generator armature. This is out of a General Motors car, I think an old Buick. And I think you can see again that there's essentially no heating going on in that one either. Now we will move to the buzzing hacksaw blade test. We have three good armatures here and one with shorted together windings. Let's see how the buzzing hacksaw blade test varies from one to another. I just wanted to make the point that the buzzing that we heard when we were looking at the temperature of the different armatures is just the, arm or the armature making poor contact with the transformer poles here. And that's not the buzzing we're going to be dealing with. We'll pick out a good armature and turn the growler on and see what happens with our hacksaw blade.
Now, the issue here is how much magnetism is there? There's, there's probably not totally none. And when I get down here, I'm actually touching the, getting close to the transformer core, and so that doesn't count. So we can kind of feel around about probably 150 degrees of rotation, and there's nothing, nothing happening to the hacksaw blade. I rotate around, nothing happening to the hacksaw blade. 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 That was a generator armature. Now we'll try the starter armature. Nothing happening to the hacksaw blade. You know, it's just, there's, there's just, there's no magnetism. There's just nothing, nothing holding that baby on there. That's our B armature, the starter armature. Okay, now we'll go to one of the two Cub Cadet starter generator armatures. This is letter C. Wow, something is really different, isn't it? There's a little less magnetism here than there is right there, but there certainly is magnetism. Now I'll rotate it like I did the others. Right there, there isn't very much at all, but there, there's a lot. But you can see that there's plenty. Not so much there, but plenty there, and so on. This is our bad one. And you can see that the hacksaw blade test really shows up very differently there. Now we'll go to the last armature, which is another Cub Cadet starter generator. A uh, little different uh, model, but it's still the same kind of machine. And we'll check there. And again, the, the hacksaw blade is doing nothing. Just nothing going on. We'll rotate it. Nothing going on anywhere. Nothing going on. Nothing going on. So that one appears not to have any shorts either. In closing, I hope you can see how these three methods of determining armature coil winding to winding shorts or shorts within a single winding can be located. To me, the really new thing about this whole video was to discover that the bad armature heats up so much on the growler. Hopefully, you now have a better understanding of how the armature growler does its job.